Hey, this is Billy from Perma Pastures Farm. Today we're going to talk about grazing. And specifically, we had a uh, viewer ask if we could do a video on how we graze tough land. Well, perfect people to ask because we're living in a place that was largely overgrazed big time. Way more cows in this area than they should have ever had. And here we are in the process of remediation. So what you see around me and all behind me is we got a mixture of grass, weeds, thistles. We got it all right here. And the reason you have the, let's call it yucky stuff, is because it was overgrazed. These pioneer species are putting things back into to the soil that were removed by mismanagement. So that's where we come into play. And we got a whole toolbox full of things in permaculture that we can use to remediate it. Um, we got high density grazing, we got mob grazing. There's a whole different variety of things you can do. Um, right now we're doing our version of it. Um, having done this before, we have a certain understanding as to what needs to happen. And um, we're gonna employ, and we're employing it right now. So in a nutshell, we're using the sheep to basically knock all this stuff down. When they go through, then the chickens do their work. And then finally, because it is rough, because this pasture is not yet where it should be, then I'm gonna come down after the chickens, they all got something they need, and I'll knock the rest of this stuff down really, really low. And then we'll show you the progression of what happens after we go through that. Now, they've already been through this area one time. In this particular area, it was still winter. And now they're working on their second rotation. Now, it's not gonna be fixed overnight, but there is already vast improvements just from the first time we've done it. And it's not uncommon for the first couple of times to see a bunch of pioneer species come back. But as the soil improves, as the microbial life in this soil improves, remember a lot of this stuff was, was wiped out by the chemicals and all the other nonsense that was put out here. So it's gonna take a little bit of time to remediate that. But we're using the animals as our allies. So. To give you some basis of comparison, this is what it looks like before the sheep get there. And if you follow me over, this is where the sheep are. If you look at it, this looks vastly different from where they're gonna go. They've knocked out, in fact, with these hair sheep, the first thing they will do, the absolute first thing, if we let them out of that cage on a new patch of ground, the first thing they will do will go after every single pioneer species. Now, ideally, we would love to put some cows out here because everybody's going to eat something different. Then we let the land rest. They move on. But because I don't yet have a perimeter fence set up, I'm not really comfortable with bringing any cows on yet. But we'll get there. So this is what it looks like after the sheep. I mean, they've really done a number on this. And this has only been a day. So they're going to move from here into the area that we just showed you. So here we are. Remember. Everything you see out here was once like a, what I just showed you. Now the chickens, now they're hungry, they're wanting their morning rations, and they also want to be moved. In fact, they love, look at this little birdie. They love being moved so much that when we dump their feed out, they won't even touch it. I mean, there's a few of them that will, but for the most part, they're going after what the sheep left behind, and they're going after all the green stuff that they really, really, really want to eat. So, what's going to happen today it's a typical rotation and they don't have to move every day. We choose to for a bunch of reasons that I can't fully explain in this video right now. But now what's going to happen is the sheep are going to move. The chickens are going to move where the sheep were. And then I'm going to come behind with a weed eater. I usually let them hit, I don't know, two to three cells before I come by with a weed eater. I knock down all this, all this stuff here. What comes back is much, much more improved than what you currently see. So these techniques work.
Okay, sheep have been, been through, chickens have been through. Now it's time for me to go through and all I'm gonna do is just whack this stuff off. We're gonna leave it there. Now, we're dealing in small cells. If you have a, a larger cell, first of all, a lot of people would say this isn't even necessary. It isn't. You could just keep going through and doing what you do. But we've seen a higher degree of improvement. I can't even remember where I got it from. But let's say you're digging, deal, dealing with a larger cell. You could easily run your, your mower through on the back of a uh, tractor or your riding mower with a, you know, keep the deck pretty high. You could do that. But all I'm going to do, because we deal with pretty small cells and they move often, like I said, once I get two or three cells to do, then I come through and here's how I do it. Not every time it's going to look like this, but this is massive improvement, folks. You had thorns, you had thistles, you had all the nastiness you can imagine in the field, things you don't necessarily want. Um, and this is how it comes back. Now, you're still going to deal to some extent with pioneer species, but this is essentially where we're shooting for. Um, and things will improve with every rotation. Just unlike the, the scenario where you see a person that just throws a bunch of cows. In fact, the very scenario we walked into here where they just dump a bunch of cows on a place. Bam, they let them go. That's it. They destroy everything. The trees are messed up the whole nine yards. No, when you do it this way, it's regenerative. We're not looking to sustain anything. We're not looking for sustainable. We are looking for regenerative. We want to see new things. We want to see it better than it was. So with every pass that you make through here, you see a drastic improvement. And that's exactly what we're shooting for. So folks, give it a shot. Let us know how it works out for you. And remember, this stuff can be scaled up whether you're on one acre or 50 or 100 acres. It doesn't matter. It's still the same methodology. It doesn't matter. So give it a shot. Let us know how it works out for you. And until next time, this is Billy, the Permaculture Pimp Daddy, where pimp stands for permaculture is my passion because it really is. We'll see you next time.